hello everybody welcome to the channel in today's video i'm going to show you how to make your own hyaluronic acid gel so remember like i said in my previous video there are two grades of hyaluronic acid we have the low molecular weight one and the high molecular weight one so for this uh, project we are going to use the high molecular weight one why because the high molecular weight one is suitable for making gel because when you add it to to water okay or to any liquid any non-acidic liquid it's going to turn into gel it might take some time for it to turn into gel but it will definitely turn into gel so when you want to make a gel you want to consider using high molecular weight of sodium high hyaluronate so this is exactly what i'm going to use so get your notes uh, formulation notebook ready and get the formula down so what you're going to need you're going to need one gram of sodium hyaluronate Okay, then we are going to dissolve that using a suitable solvent. Our solvent of choice today is vegetable glycerin. Okay, so measure five gram of vegetable glycerin. And to that, you're going to add uh, one gram of sodium hyaluronate. Make sure you go for high molecular weight. Look in the description box below for where to get, get it. So one gram of sodium hyaluronate. You ask me why am I using a solvent to dissolve this? Because it has fine particle. We will use a solvent to prevent clumping. Okay, that's why we use solvent. And keep in mind, hyaluronic acid works well when it's fully hydrated. So this is going to help speed up dehydration, okay? You will not have any clumps in, okay? Then it's going to speed up dehydration. The more hydrated your gel, okay, the better it is for your formulation. So keep that in mind. Some people do not use solvent to dissolve the particle of the hyaluronic acid so that's why i recommend you use a solvent like vegetable glycerin to dissolve the particle so as to prevent clumping okay so once you are done make sure you mix as much as you can the better the mixing the earlier it will dissolve i, I personally recommend you mix this for at least good two minutes I'm using a steering rod here to mix it. So today we are going to add 43.75 gram of distilled water or dehydrated water. Add 43.75 gram of distilled water or deionized water then you're going to mix that as well now if you are doing large batch okay you want to use an overhead stirrer for this do not use an homogenizer okay what you want to do is to disperse but not to break down we do not want to homogenize this what we our objective for this is to disperse okay the gum not to break it down now as you look at this you cannot do it more than this manually even if you use an overhead stirrer now it's going to help better you know disperse the particle okay so i will not be using an homogenizer or immersion blender for this no okay i do not want to break it i want to disperse it okay that's the chemistry behind it you disperse gums or 
this kind of particle but you do not homogenize it now at this stage you're going to cover it okay so we'll cover this okay let it stand for in the next two to three hours you're going to see a smoother gel okay that's exactly don't worry about the way it is right now um, some people will ask me oh, is it necessary to use the vegetable glycerin you might you can you can it's your choice but i i noticed that it gives you a smoother gel when you use a solvent like vegetable glycerin so keep that in mind if you don't want the headache of having to be you know mixing too much just go for this all you have to do is just cover it check it back in the next two to three hours okay you should have a smoother mixture which all you have to do is just mix it okay all you have to do is just mix it so in the next two to three hours we'll check this out and we'll go on to the next step so it's now well over two to three hours we are going to check our gel and this is exactly what you're going to have okay so you have this beautiful gel mixture with suspended molecules so this is exactly what you want so after that all you have to do is mix it mix it well and finally our final step is to add our preservative so add your preservative of choice to this uh, the preservative that i recommend is uh, you can use ilksil pe9010 available at pureblendnatural.com so that you're going to use the preservative at uh, zero point okay so you're going to use the preservative at 0 0.25 okay 0 0.25 gram well you are making a smaller batch of this that's why we are using 0 0.25 gram so mix that and all you have to do Is to bottle this okay because it's a tea card gel right add your preservative don't worry about checking the ph you do not need this because this is going to be your cosmetic active so we're going to use this you're going to add this as an active to either your lotion your toner or your cream okay any of the beauty product you are making so just make sure you had it as an active in the cool down face okay this is going to be we adding this okay you ask me okay what percentage should i use uh, what percentage should i use in uh, my beauty product well you can start from as much as i recommend from three percent upward okay depending on the uh, the type of product you are making the type of skin uh, the skin type you are making the product for for example, if you're making an anti-aging product now, I recommend you can use this at uh, 2%, 3%, up to, you can, some can, some people can use it up to 10%, depending on what you are making and how impactful you want that to be. So this is about it. This is how to make your own hyaluronic acid gel. You can ask me, can't I had use this directly on my skin? If you use this directly on your skin, trust me, it's going to be too much. So you don't want to use this directly on the skin. You can give it a try depending on your skin type. If you have extremely dry skin, you can use this as a serum. Okay, you can put it in a serum bottle and give it a try. See how your skin works well. Because to me, this is a bit too strong right now. You want to tone it down a bit. If you want to really use it, you can use it up to 10% as an active in your beauty product. Just make sure you use it in the cool down face okay make sure you use it in the cool down face so that's about this for this video remember make sure you keep this package this in a hair tight container okay and something something of this tie will do a container of this tie will do okay and hair tight container that you just all you have to do is just open it at the top 
okay and just squeeze it away squeeze it in this is going to prevent the contamination of your products and it's going to you know lengthen the shelf life you don't have to keep this in the fridge remember we've added a preservative to it okay thank you so much for joining me today if you love this video give it a thumbs up click the subscribe button and the notification icon to be notified of my next video uh, if you have any question about making this or what you can use this for also feel free to drop it we recently used this okay we had it this as an active in our protective body cream okay at stablecosmeticformulas.com where we make a beauty product a project at a time our november 2021 formulation project is um a protective body cream for both winter and summer for all skin type highly highly nourishing beauty product and this is one of the active we use in the cool down phase so that's why i'm showing you this to see to let you know that you can make active yourself and you can add it to the cool down phase of your formula to increase to boost the moisturizing property of your beauty product you want to learn how to make beauty product a project at a time just like you do visit stablecosmeticformulas.com that's where i teach my students both beauty product uh, owner uh, beauty brand uh, owners and students or people that want to make product for themselves how to make different beauty products a project at a time so join us at stablecosmeticformulas.com thank you so much for joining me today and i wish you the best in your formulation journey happy formulating everyone